Hello? Uh, is this on? Huh? Uh, are we ready? Testing. One, two, three. Uh, Okie okay, dokie. Uh, I'm just gonna start. Hello, everybody. It's me, Luigi. Ho ho. Uh, I don't like to brag too much, but this is the year of Luigi. Or, or as I like to call it, the year of me. Because it's... I'm... I'm Luigi. I'm been pretty busy this year, dealing with a lot of ghosts. Oh. These days, even taking a nap seems to be like work for some reason. Oh. I'm also starring a new Super Luigi U. Ho oh, oh. ho! Usually, my big brother Mario gets all the attention, so this has been a lot of pressure for me. Oh, mamma mia! Lots of people have been playing my game. Oh yeah! Hey, first, you could download it, and now you can buy it in stores too. So, I guess now I have to be in two places at once. Oh, I I'm going to finish uh, with a joke. Oh, okie dokie. This is Luigi's joke. <clears throat> what wears green, competes with Mario, and wears an L on his head? Do you give up? Okie dokie. Answer? A Koopa wearing an L on his head. Luigi, the green guy brother of Chris Pratt, and the weaponizer of we die mental health. Anyways, though, you guys remember when I said that in 2022 I would do a video talking about the year Luigi? But the year of Luigi really was, and I may make a separate video about that too for the next next Halloween. Yo, we're, we're getting this thing down. So remember when I said in 2022 that I would do a video that we would cover the year of Luigi? You know, looking back on things, it's crazy how long ago this event was. Now, in previous Luigi videos, I've mentioned the year of Luigi before, but considering some of y'all probably grew up thinking that Goku's from Fortnite, Discord Nitro, and the Emoji Movie, God rest your soul. You may not even know what the year of Luigi even is. Well, gamers and gameritas, this year-long event was held all the way back in March 18th, 2013, and ended on March 18th, 2014 celebrating Luigi's debut in 1983. Anyways, considering how the uh, Nintendo, Nintendo is on celebrating its franchise's anniversaries, you wouldn't think that there would be an entire year dedicated to a single character, especially Luigi at the time, because I'm not gonna hold you. While people nowadays stand Luigi like he's a successful K-pop group, this was not the case back in the day, as Luigi was definitely the lesser of the two brothers before his anniversary. But 2013 was Luigi's spotlight year, with Nintendo announcing that they were gonna go all out for Luigi's anniversary anniversary with the release of a variety of different games and merchandise for the lad. So you know what? Let's look at this in retrospect to see if Nintendo hit it out the park with this event or if they didn't. Just like they do all the time nowadays. Now with that all being said, <laughs> LUIGI! Now I'm not gonna hold you. If you don't know who Luigi is, um... Here you go. Now if you ask me, I think the games themselves were more than enough for the celebration of Luigi. I mean, we not only had multiple events held on games that were already out, but we also got brand new, very unexpected games for the Green Lad. So let's go through them, shall we? But also an FYI, before we get into covering the games, these are not going to be like full-fledged reviews of the games, but more like an overview, because I want to get this video done while I'm still alive if I can. So just don't expect full-fledged IGN reviews of the games. Either way, Let's get into it. Ah, the 3DS. This bad boy was once Nintendo's main piece of hardware that was supported with a slew of great gems. Now I just use it as a cup holder. The year Luigi was no different, since the 3DS was getting some pretty good games to get the year started off right. That's right, gamers and gameritas. To start it off, we have the release of the official sequel of Luigi's Mansion, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Now you guys gotta understand why this was such a huge deal when it was originally announced on June 7, 2011. I could compare Luigi's Mansion to games like Earthbound and Wind Waker. A game to a little cult following as the years went on and people realized how charming the game actually was, with it now being a beloved franchise in the Mario universe. Anyways, nowadays we live in a world where Luigi's Mansion is more popular than ever, and I think Dark Moon releasing during the year Luigi was the main culprit for this change in my opinion. Now with that being said, coming out on March 24th, 2013, I think people can definitely look back on Dark Moon as a strong sequel for Luigi's Mansion, with a different aesthetics and mechanics that gave it more depth than the original game, but that's not to say it was the 
perfect sequel. I would say that the general consensus agrees that the thing that people didn't like most about Dark Moon would be the level structure. Now two things before we get into it to kind of paint you guys a picture of why this is a huge problem. The first thing was the Dark Moon structure being drastically different from the original Luigi's Mansion's level structure. Luigi's Mansion was more open in its exploration, which I would say was one of the most charming things about the game itself. Being able to explore this mansion, almost giving it this homely feel in a weird way. Now it's not completely open obviously, things like the roof and whatnot are available later in the game, but in general it definitely has the feeling where you feel like you have the freedom to explore. Now the other thing you guys gotta realize is that Nintendo themselves had this really weird era where they wanted to turn everything into a new Super Mario Bros game. Personally I think it was a kink cause like, sheesh. What I mean is that even titles that wouldn't normally have a level structure like that had to have the eight worlds, go to a path on an extremely linear map that showed the main character in the overworld, and go to a linear ass level, complete the basic mission, rinse and repeat. There were a weird amount of games that had this and Dark Moon was no different. You explore five different mansions that were each divided by a mission based system where you have a clear objective. Then when you complete it, you move on to the next one and so on and so forth. This was one of the biggest complaints by fans about the game then, and these complaints seem to carry over to nowadays, considering that Luigi's Mansion 3 is more in line with the first game. Other than that though, the reception was pretty good and people enjoyed the sequel to one of Nintendo's most underrated franchises. Keep in mind that the only complaints people had were the mission structure and that there weren't any checkpoints. And you had those weirdos that didn't like the art style. <laughs> like, come on man. <laughs> Though it had a slight hiccup or two, it was definitely a massive success, especially for starting off this celebration of the year Luigi. All right, that was a pretty decent start. You know, I'm, I'm actually feeling kind of good. Okay, what we got now? Come on, man, I just... I'll continue reading the script. Now, the first Wii U game that we're gonna bring up is the greatest game of all time, New Super Luigi U. Not to be confused with New Super Mario Bros U, and definitely not confused with New Super Mario Bros 2 on the 3DS. You know, can you point that gun back at me, please? New Super Luigi U acted as an expansion of New Super Mario Bros U, which was released in the early days of the Wii U. This game was essentially New Super Mario Bros U, but on like five cans of Monster Energy, cause oh boy, this one was a doozy. First of all, instead of these levels having a usual steady timer that counts down from 400 seconds, Luigi U pretty much spits in the face of you taking your time and just starts you off with 100 seconds. Anxiety who? <laughs> Get that shit out of here. Now, because of this, obviously Nintendo had to redesign most, if not all the levels in the game to accommodate for the time change. Other than that though, yeah, it's literally just Super Mario Bros. U. I mean, since Mario, I guess, got snapped out of existence or something, they added a couple new playable characters to compensate. Obviously replacing Mario as the MC with Luigi and adding Nabbit. Okay. Honestly, this game, in my personal opinion, is probably the least exciting of the new releases for the year Luigi. At this point in time, Nintendo had already released multiple renditions of the new Super Mario Bros. series and people were kind of over it at this point. In retrospect though, I found it interesting how much effort Nintendo actually put into this expansion. I mean, they could have just made super short versions of every stage in the game and just snipped off content to make it easier, but they really did try to make something new out of the assets they already had. In a weird way, I kind of commend the route they ultimately went. Which is why when I look back on New Super Luigi U, especially since they released the game on the Nintendo Switch with New Super Mario Bros. Deluxe, I actually look back on it fondly because of the effort put in by the team. But don't get me wrong, it's still the least excited game on the list. This is also the game with the most amount of challenges relating to the year of Luigi with things like the Luigi sightings, but we'll talk about that later. For now, let's move on. Getting to the second and final 3DS game that came out for the year Luigi, we have Mario and Luigi Dream Team. The game was released in August 11, 2013 for America, whereas everyone else got it much earlier. To kind of give a dirty summary of the story, Mario, Luigi, Peach, and other Mushroom members visit this resort called Pilo Island, where they visit Pilo Castle and use the Pilo fridge to get some Pilo chicken and then have some amazing Pilo. Then after splitting up and meeting each other again in 
the collection room, they find a pillow where Luigi ends up taking a little nappy wap. Suddenly, a giant dream bubble appears and his dreams open up. Then you see a dark figure, later on revealed to be the main antagonist of the game, and Tasma, who takes Peach and drags her into the dream world. Now Mario and Luigi have to work together basically to get into Luigi's dream world and save Peach. Keep in mind, I cut off a lot of things, but that's like the general gist of the beginning of like what's going on. Now because this was part of the year of Luigi, the game involved Luigi a lot more than in the previous games. So much so, they had two Luigis. Luigi and Luigi. So this is Dreamy Luigi, who's essentially a form that Luigi takes in the dream world. With it, Dreamy Luigi was able to do a multitude of different things in both the overworld and in battle, therefore once again making Luigi possess the main mechanic. I would say that out of all four of the year Luigi games, this one's probably the overall best one, with not many huge complaints being had against it. So overall, a great addition to the year. Fun fact actually, Mario and Luigi Dream Team is the 13th best selling game on the 3DS in general, and on top of that, it was also part of the Nintendo Selects for the 3DS years later in 2017. So, uh, a little to say, it definitely was one of the best added to the year, Luigi. Now alongside the Wii U release of the greatest game of all time that has blessed our periphery reels, we had another release of a Wii U game for the event way later on, this time with the game only being available via a digital download on the Wii U eShop. May God rest your soul, you sweet sweet prince. And that game was Dr. Luigi. Dr. Luigi was released on December 31st of 2013 and was, well, it's just Dr. Mario but with Luigi in it. Now, to be fair, Dr. Luigi was the sixth installment in the Dr. Mario cinematic universe and was an announcement that, if I recall correctly, was something that caught a lot of people off guard. I think out of all the main Year of Luigi games, I think Dr. Luigi would probably have to be the least memorable to people and the one that the average gamer would completely forget about when we're calling back to the year. I mean, even when looking back years later, people didn't even know this title existed. But like, can you blame them though? From the digging I did, it seems that the advertising was very minimal for the game compared to the other titles for the year. As there's only one official trailer for Dr. Luigi, which was the day it came out. Also, on December 18th on a Nintendo Direct, they did announce the game, but from what I could gather, that was pretty much all the advertising for the game that they did. Now, in the game, defense saying that the only value given to the game is that it's Dr. Mario is unfair because the game does have a couple different modes that you can tackle. Now since this isn't the Dr. Luigi review I'm gonna give basic descriptions to these modes as I would love to be able to see my family before I die. Alongside being able to play the traditional way aka the retro remedy mode there's also the Operation L mode in which the capsules that Luigi throws into the bottle are shaped like an L rather than having the traditional having a pale shape that's in the other Dr. Mario game, which is arguably a lot easier than the normal mode since you have more to work with. Other than that though, the mode is generally the same thing with the goal being to still kill all the viruses. Virus Buster is another mode in which you essentially play Dr. Mario, but you're only allowed to use touchscreen controls of the gamepad. Finally, there's online battle mode, where you can play with your friends that you're definitely playing Dr. Luigi with instead of stupid games like Mario Kart or Smash Bros, like come on now. You can play the game worldwide in which you can either play Operation L or Retro Remedy. Now there is more to talk about with the modes and stuff, but we can cover it another day. No, no promises. Anyway, despite all the modes and whatnot, the game is Dr. Mario, and unfortunately, it's the most forgettable game out of the four games that came out for the year Louis. Fair point. Now as I've explained in a previous Luigi video, the game where Luigi debuted is the arcade game Mario Bros back in 1985. Hi, so I actually made a mistake here real quick, I just want to make this addendum. This was not the first appearance of Luigi, the first appearance of Luigi was actually a Game & Watch game like a few years back before Mario Bros. So let's just say it was one of Luigi's first appearances, okay? Just, sorry, I just want to make that addendum. Right. The reason why this was the case was the need for a character for other people to play 
play because they wanted Mario Bros to be a game that could be played by more than one person simultaneously. So they made Luigi for that very reason. Not really because they wanted to make a genuine character, but more for the sake of necessity. Then in the Mario canon, they said that this was Mario's game forever. But now we've come full circle where Luigi went from only being a necessity to being the star player in the same game he was introduced in. This game was an addition to the year of Luigi, coming out to the public in November of 2013. You could only play it through an add-on in either the NES Remix titles or Super Mario 3D World. For Luigi Bros in 3D World, you actually have to either complete the main story or if you had data for a new Super Luigi Bros U, you could skip all of that and just play the game right away. Which I'm sure was Nintendo's way of publicly apologizing for people buying it. And I didn't know this, but apparently the game is available in the Switch version too. Alright. Anyways, there's not much to say about the game itself, just that it's Mario Bros with Luigi in it. Oh man, where have we heard that statement before? Other than that, the biggest change to the game was the replacement of Mario, which is the modern costume of Luigi, alongside Fire Luigi as the Player 2 character. I feel like they should have had Mario be Player 2 just for the heck of it, but I, mean, I guess Miyamoto wouldn't approve. Speaking of a Luigi, let's talk about Luigi siding, yay! Alongside Luigi Bros, a few games had a mini game built inside it as well, where players of NES Remix 2, New Super Luigi U, Super Mario 3D World, and Captain Toad Treasure Tracker could participate in a game within the game to find a bunch of Pixel Luigis, available to hunt for all your slightly overweight Italian green man needs. Each game has a plethora of them at your fingertips, with some being very tricky to spot since some are either very small, are in a place completely out of the way of the level, or both. Some, aka like 95% of them, Get a good look at an 8 bit Luigi, 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 8 bit Luigi. Okay, make that 98%. Are based on the iconic 8 bit Luigi that you see constantly. You have a few based on the newer edition of Luigi that you see in promotional and whatnot, and some, and I mean some, based on 16 bit Luigi. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's the only one they made. And trust me, Nintendo didn't skip out on the variety of what Luigi's doing in each of the Luigi signings. I mean, let's go through the list. You have Ducking Luigi, Cutout Luigi, Hockey Luigi, Dying Luigi, Statue Luigi, Swimming Luigi, Bigger Swimming Luigi, Grass Luigi, Peeping Tom Luigi, Scared Luigi, and so much more. <laughs> Oh, hi, Mark. It was actually really interesting to see something like this in so many games. Though little to say in retrospect, I wish there was more variety in the types of Luigi's that you could find in the wild. I, I know, huge shocker. Things like the statue Luigi are pretty cool compared to the 86 8-bit Luigi doing the jumping pose. Now, with that being said, I realized that this was just a complimentary event in general, and one that was just a little fun side thing to give to the fans. Overall, I enjoyed the event, especially since it wasn't tailor-made for just one game. Now, when you eventually get sick of trying to find a bunch of 8-bit Luigi's for no reward whatsoever and staring at Luigi in the Smash Bros page, man, look at that pose. Oh, speaking of that, there was also a reference to the year of Luigi and Sakurai's pick of the day, where Masahiro Sakurai, the creator of the Smash Bros series, <laughs> Don't don't know if you know it, but I I, I kind of like that series. Would post pictures of Smash 4 on Miiverse, and at a lot of times, returning veterans would be introduced in this format, where they would be announced in a pick of the day. Luigi was no different as he got confirmed for the game on August 7, 2013, and in the blurb under, Sakurai actually referenced the year of Luigi in the post, saying, Luigi joins the battle. In prior games, we've never introduced Luigi before release, but why not? This is the year of Luigi after all. That's why he's the GOAT! THE GOAT! Flash forward to April 23rd, 2014, and you get a trailer where Nintendo announced that on NES Remix 2, you can play Super Luigi Bros, which was essentially taking the 16th stage in NES Remix 1, the stage where you can do the original Super Mario Bros level backwards, and making a whole game out of it. What I was most shocked by is that this literally took the entirety of Super Mario Bros, flipped it the other way around, and then added an ending where Peach was already saved by Mario. I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry for the spoilers. Sorry. Once again, this was released as an add-on to NES Remix 2 and had it in the start screen right there ready to play, which I find really cool honestly. I mean this was literally seeing the game from a whole different perspective. Overall though it was a nice addition, though a pretty late one since this was April of 2014, which was at the end of the year Luigi at that point. But hey, 
I'm not complaining. So, gamers and gameritas, that covered mostly all the games that were there for the year Luigi. I think overall it was a good quality of games, with some being definitely better than others. But that's not to say those games had no effort put into them. But that's just one piece to the year of Luigi puzzle. There was a lot more that was put into the year. For example, we have the merch and collectibles that were available for gamers to spend their hard-earned money for. Ah, capitalism. Now, there are actually a, quite a lot of items available, so let's go down the laundry list. Starting with the big kahuna, the 3DSs. And, and we'll start with the Luigi themed 3DS. Which one? I'll tell you in a minute. First, let's start with this one. Now, this wasn't just any old 3DS Excel, but one that actually came with Mario and Luigi Dream Team pre installed. The design features a pattern of Luigi just flowing throughout the top of the 3DS with a pure white background, and the box art even shows the year Luigi symbol. It's pretty cool if you ask me. I really like the design and the overall aesthetically pleasing visuals of the 3DS, the very top of it. And if you ask me, since Nintendo were constantly doing themed 3DSs, what better event to do one for them, alright? Now while doing research, I saw that there was another limited edition 3DS that Nintendo sold, which was another 3DS based on Mario & Luigi Dream Team. One that had an outlined version of both Mario & Luigi on the front of the 3DS with a more grey background. Now honestly, it took a bit for me to get down when this 3DS came out exactly. It also shows on pictures that I saw of it that it also had the year Luigi branding on it so it definitely was a part of it and not something that was released years later which is what I initially thought at first after checking an eBay page with a product on it and going to about this product section it seemed that the gray version of the 3ds came out on December 2nd 2013 I had to use eBay to solve this and it may not even be right so I'm just gonna say around that time period I find it interesting that Nintendo released two limited edition 3ds's that had pretty much the same perk of having the exact same game installed, but hey, this was in 2013, so not much use having constructive criticism. The next 3DS, or should I say 2DS, was shown on October of 2013 prematurely you see, as it was shown off firstly by Kotaku, quote, it's the year of Luigi, and so if there was ever a time to launch a Luigi 2DS, it would be now, right? Well, it seems that there might be a Luigi 2DS in our future, based on these pictures of what seemed to be an unannounced 2DS that a tipster sent in. As you might expect, it's white slash green. Actually, it even has Luigi on it. We also got some info as to its apparent leaked release date, allegedly slated for a November 1st release in the UK. Due to this article and some talk amongst the green man community, the rumor fully spread of this leaked 2DS design. Since this still is the year of Luigi, some of you might be interested in knowing that Nintendo may have plans to release a special limited edition Luigi themed 2DS. There is no confirmation from Nintendo if this is real or not yet, but apparently there is a leaked release date of November 1st in the UK, so we'll know soon enough. Now, while that's all fine and dandy, for the uh, 5 2DS fans that are out there, I have some bad news for you guys. Yep. It's uh... It was, it was fake. Quote, A few days ago, we received a tip about a slick-looking, Year of Luigi-themed Nintendo 2DS. It turns out that it is a real 2DS, just not one made by Nintendo, nor one that'll ever be mass-produced. It's a mod. The one responsible for tricking everyone was a lad by the name of Matthew Wiggins, a person that actually owns an online shop called Rose Colored Gaming, in which they sell a bunch of high-quality case mods, stands, display shelves, and like a bunch of other stuff. And no, I'm not being paid to say this, so considering they're not sponsoring the video we're gonna quickly move along quickly move along i'm just kidding i like the store format and like the items are actually pretty cool so yeah shout out you now apparently there was an interview that possibly went over things like the overall creation of the box and the motives behind it but sadly it seems like it's lost to time the link in the article leads to nothing but when i put it in the way back machine i found this which is an article by second opinion games that says quote for the past few days rumors have been swirling that this is an official nintendo product on this show we're going to set the record straight that this is a custom system and not an official nintendo product this did have a youtube link available but unfortunately it seems like the video is also lost to time since it looks Looks like it's been deleted for some reason. But I did manage to scrape up that shortly after the reveal of the 2DS being fan made, it was auctioned off for charity apparently. So at least we weren't completely left in the dark about it. But other than that, that's all I could gather unfortunately. It's a big sag, but at least I tried. But believe it or not, that's not all the 3DS's that were released, gamers and gameritas. Because on November 28th, 2013, there was also another 3DS given out to people, which was the basic blue 3DS, but with Dark Moon on it instead. Mm. Guys, not even like a like a solid green 3DS? 
the show. This one was a lot less impressive than the Dream Team limited edition ones, but it was a nice gesture nonetheless. Though I'm not sure why they couldn't just use the same custom Luigi 3DS, but just with Luigi's Mansion instead of Dream Team, but it is what it is. We can clearly tell which game Nintendo likes more. On top of all of that, this 3DS was also exclusive to Target. Meanwhile, there was a 2DS edition of the bundle that was exclusive to Walmart. Allegedly. And that, my friends, was pretty much all the 3DSs and 2DSs that exclusively came out for the celebration of the year Luigi. But there's one other item that came out during this time that I will admit may not be for the year Luigi specifically, but has enough of a connection with Luigi that I'll throw it in there just in case. And that, gamers and gameritas, was the bundle of the Luigi Wii Remote Plus. Now, what the hell am I even talking about, you may ask? Well, unless you want me to sit there and explain gyroscope technology and rotational motion recognition, which you don't want. Basically, going back to 2009, Nintendo announced Wii Motion Plus, which basically had you attach a bumper thing at the end of the Wii Remote, so it was better at improving the technology of moving with the game, which was the whole gimmick of the Wii Remote in the first place. Nintendo ultimately decided to embed the technology in all future productions of the Wii Remote, making it the new standard. So, with that being said, during the year of Luigi, aka 2013, Nintendo announced themed Wii Remote Plus controllers, and they had happen to be based off the Mario Bros themselves. Now that's kind of why I hesitate to mention it since this was more of a Mario Bros thing and not a Luigi specific one, but in my defense, around the time of the 3DS bundle with Dark Moon being announced, there was also the announcement of there being a bundle with one of the launch titles of the Wii U, Nintendo Land, alongside getting the Luigi themed Wii Remote in the same package. Now this could be a coincidence that as far as I know, they only had a Luigi one as a bundle, but it could also be done on purpose to promote the year Luigi, but at the end of the day, the world will never know. Oh well, at least I can play the Luigi's Mansion mini game with my cool looking Luigi themed controller. Ah, uh, makes me miss the good old minutes of me talking about Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Coinciding with that game coming out, Nintendo actually held this thing called Luigi's 72 Hour Sale, which was an event where they turned the website green for 72 hours, I <laughs> no big shocker, and had quite a few games on sale as well, which ran from March 17th to March 19th. Now I'm not sure exactly which games were on sale at that point, but from a comment I read about it, it seems that Mario Tennis Open and an Animal Crossing game case, along with some other knickknacks like Wii holders, t-shirts, and others were on sale as well. I think this overall wasn't received the best with the main issue being that the merch that was on sale had either very loose ties or no ties at all to Luigi himself, which is a fair criticism. Maybe Nintendo could have made some better merch, like, I don't know, maybe like a diorama of Dark Moon or something? <laughs> Oh my god. This is a personal favorite of mine, with it being a piece of merchandise that Nintendo sold to celebrate both the year of Luigi and Dark Moon. The diorama of Luigi and the ghost dog thing, man. I feel like maybe this was a response to the backlash that the 72 hour sale got, since this did release at the tail end of the year, December of 2013 to be more specific. It cost a pretty hefty 1500 coins in North America and 7000 stars in Europe, but honestly for any collectors out there, it's definitely worth it if you've been storing up. Uh, 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 bring a little hunt to, to your house with this diorama. It is behind you. Celebrate the year Luigi and spook up your shelf with this limited edition. Individually numbered Luigi's Mansion 2 diorama. As Mario's scary cat brother enters the mansion with his trusty Poltergust 5000, he's greeted by the ever pleasant Polterpop and mischievous g g g g ghosts in this. 12.5 cm by 10.5 cm by 7 cm model. Ah, ah, ah. I want to die. <laughs> Not gonna lie to you guys, I was a dumb kid when the year Luigi was going on, so I didn't even know about Club Nintendo and the point system and how you get it. But you already know if I did, this would have been copped for sure. And a lot of people agreed because it sold out in like a day or so. So because this went so well, Nintendo actually restocked them later in Club Nintendo of Europe in February of 2014. But people were starving to get this and it sold out again pretty quickly. And that was all she wrote, which was unfortunate, especially with the um, amazingly fair prices 
it goes for nowadays. Now, while you can definitely purchase this expensive ass diorama, I think you'll definitely find a hard press for people to give up their Luigi pins, considering that there are only 980 in the whole world. This event, known as the Luigi Pin Contest, was basically a pretty VIP award for anyone that purchased New Super Luigi U. And only for people that live in North America and Canada. Sorry, other people. Basically, if you bought the game, you could gain access to a survey. Completing the survey by August 1st of 2020, 13 would not only nab you double the amount of coins you would normally get, but it would also put you in a draw to win one of 980 year of Luigi pin. Man, people thought Nintendo were new to the whole formal thing with the Mario anniversary stuff. Nah dog, Nintendo was doing this decades ago. Joking aside, I think that this was a pretty decent move by Nintendo overall. If people were gonna have any issue with any of the main year of Luigi games, it would definitely have to be Super Luigi. It would definitely have to be New Super Luigi U. It would definitely have to be New Super Luigi U. So giving your player base more of an incentive to buy essentially very similar games in a very similar time frame is a good thing. And while the little things like having access to the pin and gaining early access to Luigi Bros are small things, together it ultimately adds up to being more worth it overall. And for the people that didn't buy the game, it's not like they missed out on anything too incredibly crazy. Unless once again you're a raging collector in which case... I am so sorry for your loss. But if you are a raging collector, then I hope you took a flight to Japan during this year because then you would have missed out on the Year of Luigi Sound Collection, which was a CD soundtrack that had 30 songs on it, all tied to Luigi in some way, shape, or form. The games were pretty varied, ranging in the obvious ones like Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon and Mario Luigi Dream Team to a couple ones that you wouldn't really expect. One of the most surprising for me personally was the Super Paper Mario songs and one for Mario Strikers Charge. Now, once again, this was only a available in Japan, but it costs about 400 points. But if you were a good little lad and bought any of the games promoted for the year Luigi, then you would get it half off at only 200 points. Some other things to kind of list off in terms of miscellaneous merchandise that was on Club Nintendo were things like Dr. Luigi cleaning cloth, a Luigi pen and notepad, a special edition Nintendo 3DS case that had the logo for year Luigi on it, posters, special coins, and then some other Mario merchandise that wasn't specifically for the year Luigi like mugs, hoodies, phone cases, you know, the works. But yeah, let's just say Nintendo did their thing with the different merch drops promoting the year of Luigi from the multiple 3DSs to the cool pin to you getting a freaking diorama like sign me up. Definitely on the upper tier of promotional items for sure. But we are not done yet. Now, despite us talking a lot about the year of Luigi, we're not done whatsoever. In fact, we still have a bunch of events and videos that were uploaded and held that we haven't even touched yet. I mean, there's the Miiverse competitions, the Luigi Parkour video, the Luigi Chicago train. Wait, what? So, I want you guys to close your eyes and go back to the day of August 12th, 2013. You wake up from your bed having an amazing sleep. After scrolling on your phone for a bit, brush your teeth, get dressed for work, and head outside. You rush to the Chicago train as that's your main method of transportation. It's always there when you need it. Then you go and rub your eyes to get the eye boogies off your face before you board and... My God! All right, now actually open your eyes because you were dreaming the whole time. Like, like, no, 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 like the train is real, but you were, you were dreaming riding it. Plus, I need you to stay awake for the rest of the video. I need the retention. How do I even begin to explain this? Well, to start off, yes, it's literally called the Chicago L train normally, which is hilarious thinking about it, and it makes sense why Nintendo would want to partner with it. Nintendo and the Chicago Transit Authority made a partnership where Nintendo essentially transformed the train system with Luigi decor everywhere, including making damn near the whole thing green, both inside and outside. It was therefore named the Luigi line for the duration that it was up, used to promote new Super Luigi U. My god, how bad was the game selling? First the pins, now this? Now the decorations lasted until September 8th, but only on August 12th between the hours of 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. and only on the brown line, you can meet the real Luigi on the train, where he apparently proposes to you fun stuff. And after a hearty adventure on the Luigi line, they had demo kiosks readily available at the upper platforms of the Clark and Lake station where you could play New Super Luigi U like I previously mentioned. On top of all that, if it didn't get Luigi enough, Nintendo's Twitter account was completely taken over by Luigi all through the 12th of August, detailing the amazing journey of Luigi's exploration in Chicago. Now allow me to educate you through the eyes of the green man himself.
Here we go. Ride with me on the L train. Brown line, number 424. Let my Chicago adventure begin. Hashtag Luigi and me. All aboard, my Luigi train's leaving the station. I hear the ride has one loop. I hope I don't get dizzy. Riding the L is fun. Chicago is my kind of town. Hashtag Luigi and me. Just stepped off the L train at the Clark and Lake station and hit my head. Ow! Classic Luigi. Hashtag Luigi and me. Come play New Super Luigi U at the Clark and Lake station. On the L. For Luigi. Time for a stroll around Chicago. I wonder if there's any good pizza places here. <laughs> Look, there's my train. I hope... <laughs> Look, there's my train. I hope everyone had fun riding it. It's hard to have a bad time when you're riding the L. Mamma Mia, the Chicago buildings are tall. Now I know how Mario must feel. It's funny because he's shorter than me. <laughs> Golly, what the, why did Mario catch a stray? Hey, it's the Chicago River. I hear that sometimes they dye it green. <laughs> I guess they forgot today. <laughs> I think I'm in pizza heaven. <laughs> or maybe I'm dreaming again. If I'm dreaming, please do not wake me up. Headline, famous Nintendo bro has an amazing day in Chicago. Wait, am I famous now? Hashtag, Luigi and me. Well that, was fucking dreadful. Anyways, the Chicago L train was a really cool idea. Though I kind of wish there wasn't just one day where you could meet Luigi on the train. Apparently they did have places off the train where people ended up taking pictures and stuff with him, but I still feel like you could have made it like a thing to happen every other week until September 8th when the decorations were taken down. Regardless though, it was definitely a unique way to advertise a game that was coming out a week later. But like, why is it always new Super Luigi U, man? Oh my gosh. Okay, can, can we, hold on, can we, can we like change the scene a bit? I'm kind of tired of talking about new Super Luigi U. Can we, can we not? Okay, okay, N Nintendo World, that, that's cool. All right, I, I think I can mess with this. Not like Luigi is there. So, Nintendo World, and no, we're not talking about a theme park, unfortunately, but a place located in Rockefeller Center, New York, where you can get the latest and greatest Nintendo games and merchandise. Quote, Nintendo New York is your very own warp pipe into the Mushroom Kingdom and beyond. With 10,000 square feet of dedicated gaming goodness spread over two floors, you can check out new and exciting titles headed to Nintendo Switch, while also scratching that itch to pick up exclusive memorabilia featuring your favorite selection of gaming superstars. So yeah, it's essentially a giant Nintendo store where you can get a lot of different Nintendo goodies. Not only that, but you'll also see a lot of different events that get held there depending on the game that gets released at the time. This leads to the Year of Luigi. Which which of course had a couple events that took place at Nintendo World New York. Those being launch events for Dark Moon and New Super Luigi U, the pajama party and celebration for Mario and Luigi Dream Team, which by extension is something I gotta cover because these games are officially part of the Year of Luigi, and then there was the general Year of Luigi event itself. And since we were all too busy riding Luigi, We unfortunately missed the pajama party event, but regardless, let's see what we missed. But first, let's talk about the Luigi Dark Moon event. Taking place on what I assumed to be March 24th, the same day that the game itself came out in North America. It wasn't the most documented event ever, but from videos, we can see that there were actually a couple things to do there. The Dark Moon event had a few special things that caught my eye. For one, they actually allowed you to play the original Luigi's Mansion, which I actually found quite surprising, to say the least. On top of that, there also seemed like there was merch that was available and tailored for the Dark Moon event, things like boo plushies and Luigi tassel beanies, along with a bunch of other pieces of merch. Another really cool thing they had was a display which showed pictures, a couple plushies and figures, a Luigi cap, the Luigi's Mansion games alongside the manuals as well, a really cool diorama, and the coolest thing on display, the Poltergust 5000 itself, and some other things that you can look at the pics and find yourself. The most surprising thing for me to see though was the Luigi history section. I'm not too sure if they had this at the other 
trailer launches or at the year Luigi main event, but I thought it was cool for them to have that there for people to get to know the green lad a little better. One thing I will say though is that these descriptions that are by the game are very interesting to say the least, mostly because they don't really even mention the game that it's next to. Like this one right here. In 2004, Facebook started and changed the way we connect with people all over the world. Did you know that Luigi has over 1,500,000 likes? This is for the description of Super Mario 64 DS. And oh man, nothing like talking about George H.W. Bush in the Super Mario 2 section. And this one about Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon has gotta be the worst one. I mean, the Harlem Shake takes over YouTube and even Luigi gets in on the dance craze. Like, what even is that? Spreading nothing but lies on the timeline. <laughs> And yeah, on the real though, completely off topic, but there was a lot of Harlem shaking during the year Luigi. They they really ran that trend to the ground. All right, all right, we're, we're off track, we're off track, all right, all right. Let's, let's move on to something more wholesome. <laughs> when I say wholesome, I mean actually wholesome. Like this this isn't this isn't that bad. Let's move on to the pajama party for the launch of Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Now I'm not sure the exact day the event was held, but considering that it was a launch event for the game, I would guess that this took place on August 11th, the day that the game officially came out. Now unfortunately there's not too much footage of the event, but from what we have it seemed like it was held in one room, and from what it looks like, no one was wearing pajamas. Oh oh there goes one. Oh there too. And to the Nintendo World New York standard, there was a treasure trove of exclusive merch that people could get, like shirts and hats as well as pillows, slippers, and backpacks. There were also things like a popcorn machine, my favorite part of a pajama party, red and green cups themed after the brothers themselves, Mario and Luigi cupcakes, and is that a Pokemon sign? Then from what I assume was the main event, Mario and Luigi themselves came to celebrate and ramped the party up from one... Yeah, it's like a moderate 30. The brothers came by to take pictures, more hot and shake, and play musical chairs. Man, <laughs> Luigi didn't play musical chairs with me on the train when I asked him. <sighs> All right, whatever. This kid won. Golf claps, everyone. Other than that though, there wasn't much else in terms of the pajama party, though it seemed like one of the more eventful launch parties given that there was a specific theme, unlike the Dark Moon launch event and the next one that we're going to talk about, the new Super Luigi- I DANG IT! I THOUGHT WE WERE DONE! <sighs> the new Super Luigi U launch was probably the least documented out of the launch event. YES! YES! Uh, I I mean, man, that that is incredibly unfortunate. <laughs> oh well, let's let's just analyze what we can. This actually wasn't a celebration of when New Super Luigi U first came out as DLC for New Super Mario Bros U, but when it came out as its own standalone version on August 25th, 2013 in North America. Moving on to what there was at the actual event, we know that Luigi was present here as well, taking pictures and walking around as usual. And I also assume you had the ability to play a demo of New Super Luigi U on the monitors. So some merch relating to the game. There's also some balloons present, but I feel like that was mostly for the main year Luigi event. Speaking of, we finally made it to the final Nintendo World New York event, and that is the celebration of Luigi's 30th anniversary. And it seems like all the funds were put into this for an event to remember, except not a lot of people really remember it. So did it really do its job? Either way, at this event, you could find all types of Luigi merchandise, like plushies of Tanuki Luigi, Luigi mugs, Luigi shirts, and new Super Luigi. <laughs> It seemed like they also went pretty nuts with the decor as there were green lights giving the store a green hue to the whole building and a very big green poster that outlines Luigi throughout the years. On top of all that, a new Super Luigi U tournament being held where the player that could finish the level the fastest would win. Shout out to Kelly with first place, we'll just say that they won the whole thing and move on. Of course with every event having it, you guys already know Luigi showed up to accept this beautifully made cake and the whole crowd celebrated his birthday by cheering his name and singing him happy birthday. On 
keeping it real, this was a really wholesome way to celebrate Luigi's 30th. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would definitely say that this is the coolest event out of all the ones we talked about, and thus ends everything that the Nintendo World Store did for the year of the week. Overall, they did their thing with the events, and I would say the celebrations were a huge success. And now that we're finished with that, we still need to talk about one other thing before we move on to bigger and better things, aka more year Luigi stuff, though this one won't be nearly as long as the Nintendo World Store, and that is the Wii U Summer Tour of 2013. From what I understand, the Wii U tours were basically a way for Nintendo to get the Wii U's name out there more, since the marketing for the Wii U wasn't the greatest and the console was essentially on life alert in its first actual year of coming out. So with that, they ran the Wii U tour, basically deciding to advertise it by going out to different places throughout the US in 2013, lasting from May 6th to September 2nd, and have people in those respective areas be able to play newer games on the Wii U, from games like Lego City Undercover to even the Wind Waker remake. These events were held in places like Denver, Chicago, New York, and the list goes on. But for the Wii U tour that we're gonna focus on specifically was the one located in Anaheim, California, more specifically in downtown Disney, Disney in the Disney Resort in the summer of 2013. Funnily enough, this is one of the first ones that was held, going from May 26th to June 23rd. In this specific Wii U tour, there was confirmed some Year Luigi content, with things like posters and boards promoting it, alongside having some Year Luigi games to play, like new Super Luigi U. But yeah, other than that, there wasn't much else besides having new Super Luigi U there at the very least, and apparently some other games that had already come out, besides Rayman Legends, which had demos out already. Now you probably think we're done here covering the year Luigi. After all, we've covered pretty much everything on the wiki page. But my friends, don't don't worry, because I know you were definitely worrying and not wanting to click off. We have a few other stragglers to cover for the most part before wrapping this up. That being miscellaneous stuff that occurred throughout the year, you know, things like contests, other sales, etc. Starting towards the beginning of the year, we have Miyamoto Swap Note that took place on April 20th, where if you had played Dark Moon on the 3DS, you get a special note from Miyamoto via the Swap Note app, saying the following, quote, It's just me, Shigeru Miyamoto. How do you like Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon? I hope you're not too scared like him. The year Luigi just just started. I'm sure he appreciates your support. Damn, Miyamoto basically just called this man a pussy on his own anniversary. Absolutely barbaric, Miyamoto. Have you no shame? Now the next topic is something that was taking place throughout the entirety of the year of Luigi, and that is the year of Luigi community on Miiverse. Now, what is that exactly? As you may know, Miiverse, which was Nintendo's personal social media platform that was exclusive to the 3DS and Wii U respectively, had its own set of events involving the Year of Luigi. You see, there was essentially a group made specifically for the Year of Luigi accurately called the Year of Luigi Community. And on this page were subcategories of other communities that made up the overall group. The communities that the Year of Luigi group umbrellaed were the community for Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon slash Luigi's Mansion 2, Mario and Luigi RPG 4 Dream Adventure community, which was the community for Dream Team, New Super Luigi U community, and what I would say was the most interesting group of all, the developers room. Now, the other three are pretty self-explanatory, but what exactly was the developers room? Well, how I can best explain it is that it was a space for specifically game developers and higher-ups like Ikebata-san, Tezuka-san, and even Shigeru Miyamoto himself. One person that stuck out like a sore thumb, however, was a person by the name of Mari-chan. She seemed to be the one that was to increase the vibe check of the developers room and the overall community in general, so uh, that's something. Hi, I'm Mari-chan, your sensational new event manager. I'm gonna bring some pizzazz to this community with a bunch of activities for everyone to enjoy. Thus far, I've been organizing activities only in the Japanese New Super Mario Bros. U community. But hey, Mario and Luigi are brothers, so I should treat them the same, right? So I've done my Luigi mustache and here I am. Now then, fire up your artistic flair and get ready to celebrate all things Luigi because I'll be back soon with more details of upcoming activities. He sure is pretty, Sheldon. As you can see, she seemed to be in charge of hosting events throughout the entire year. I would wager that a lot of the aforementioned events were most likely lost to time, though some were managed to be stored fortunately. A lot of them were apparently hosted by Mari-chan, who was a huge help in the community. Now, Mari-chan seemed to run quite a lot of things in the community, specifically for each of the year Luigi games that were coming out, and we'll be talking about each one. Starting off, we have the Dark Moon Drawing Contest, in celebration for Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. These consisted of multiple drawing competitions that had people
people draw original characters based on one of the five mansions that are in the game. The names for the drawing contest were Gloomy Souls for Gloomy Manor on May 1st, though she announced on the 12th that the results got delayed until the 16th when she finally showed the results of the one. Horde Haunters for Haunted Towers on May 17th, Weird Workers for the Old Clockworks on May 30th, Mystery Miners for the Secret Mine on June 13th, and Treacherous Terrors for Treacherous Mansion on June 26th. March on would then go on and introduce a first place winner, two second place winners, three third place winners, and four special place winners for each contest and highlight them in her own post. Why does she have multiple people in the same place? Uh, the economy? Now for the winners, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm speeding through this because I have like 20 people to go through, so here we go. For Gloomy Souls, the first place winner was Yami from Mexico. Followed by Saki and Don Katal in second, we have KK, Yanagaman-san, and Ken5 in third. Then in the special place, there's the flying fuck? Boo, Daddy, and Harrison. Next, for Horrid Haunters, the first place winner was... K. <laughs> Second place was attained by Yami and Luis Fur. Third was snagged by Sir Ginko, Akuma Senjin-san, and Nike-san. And the special place was given to Andy, Arata-san, Ken5, and Kirara-san. Weird Workers was next, and the main weirdo that won was Mimiri-san. I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't mean it like I, I didn't mean it like that. They, they like... They were, they were just, they were, we, I Maribek and Amayu-san took the second place, followed by Michelle, Yahi-san, and Kirara-san for third. Then, in the special place, we got Luka, Coke, Mine-san, and Akuma Senjin-san. Mystery Miners is up next, and the victor was Kashi-san. Then, in second place, we have Tom and Gamio bella san In third, there's Zap-san, Sergio, and Itami-san. Then, in the special place, there's Yu Fujimiya-san, Mimidi-san, Troy-san, and Ken-5. Then, finally, we have the Treacherous Terrors competition, with the one and only Akuma Senjin san taking first place then in second place we got buster and michelle in third we have kashi san omayu san and then in the special place we have angie mayumi mother san marillion san and mimiri san so guys what did we learn from this exactly that's right the japanese are too talented but hey anyone on twitter could have told you that honestly before we move on to Mari-chan's next escapade, however, we're moving a street pass for the next thing that happened during E3 of 2013, meaning probably sometime in early June, which was an event that happened in the Street Pass Me Plaza app, where you have a bunch of Nintendo executives and game designers like Tono, Iwata, Kensuke Tanabe, and more sent out to play a street pass, in which everyone was wearing a Luigi cap and a dark green outfit to celebrate the year. Look out, gamers. The real goats have come through. It was overall a cool way to get these big wigs on your street pass. Along Side already being able to talk to a good amount of them in the developers room. And speaking of that, we gotta get back to Mari Chan's Miiverse events. Mari Chan's next Miiverse event was for New Super Luigi U, starting on June 19th, 2013, and wrapping up on September 7th. And this one involved something a little simpler, which was to just take pictures of certain levels throughout the game for her scrapbook. Basically, you were to take a picture of a level in a world alongside a caption, and she kept doing this until she got a thousand pictures total on the official website. I personally call caption but we'll just go with it. The only real restriction to get on the scrapbook was as long as they were taken in certain worlds, those being the ones that she assigned. You had Acorn Plains announced on June 19th, Layer Cake Desert on June 26th, Sparkling Waters on America Day, aka July 4th, Frosted Glacier on the 12th of July, Soda Jungle on July 25th, Rock Candy Mines of August 9th, Meringue Clouds on sometime in mid-August, uh, sorry, that was like the only one that I couldn't find on the archives unfortunately, Peach's Castle on the 5th of September, and Superstar Road on September 13th, making eight different contests in total. If you hadn't noticed, similar to the Dark Moon drawing contest, you would use the various worlds as the rule or prompt that you would have to follow. Other than that, you could take a picture of whatever in said world and whatever pose you wanted Luigi to do in the game. In my opinion, I think that this was overall the easiest and most accessible contest out of all the Mari Chan events to participate in. And while on the topic of new Super Luigi U and having contests over it, there was actually a whole other Super Luigi U contest while this one was taking place. More specifically, on July 27th. That's right guys, Mari Chan isn't the only one that creates interesting contests for people to participate in. Enter in the least amount of coins contest, where the goal was to get the least amount of coins. I know big shot. Wait a minute. Why do I feel like I've done this bit before? It's still a mystery.
This was announced by the game director of Super Luigi U, Masataka Takemoto-san, who had this to say. Quote, if you've finished the game already, I'm sure you've noticed that you can now travel to a secret island and check out your game records. What I want to see is a screenshot of that showing how many coins you picked up in New Super Luigi U. Let's make a competition. But there's a twist. The winner is the one who has the least amount of coins. What's the lowest coin total? Is it possible to complete the game without picking up any coins? If so, has anyone ever managed it? I look forward to finding out the answer. Good luck, everyone. This competition was to last till August 18th, and it seemed like a fun little challenge to impose on people. Too bad there's a lot of tryhards in this world that hate fun. So apparently according to a comment I found on one of the websites, someone had already finished and posted the game with zero coins on the same day that the article was posted. Actually apparently it was before the actual article was posted. My god, you people are fiends! Fiends, I say! Well, it's okay, gamers. While you may have failed you and your parents to not win the Super Luigi U least amount of coins contest, you may be able to get in the good graces of your parents by participating in the Where Will Luigi Fall Asleep sweepstakes, announced on August 1st. Now, for once, this actually wasn't announced in a Miiverse post or anything, but a set of commercials that Nintendo released to promote Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Though this also seemed like something that was exclusive to the US. Sorry again other people. These videos featured a trilogy where Mario will get sucked into Luigi's dreams because he keeps falling asleep in probably the weirdest scenarios I've ever seen. <laughs> like seriously, how is this even possible? Luigi can show up to his event in New York and be completely fine, but you expect me to believe that he can't even sit down and eat pasta in broad daylight without the dude falling asleep? Who even knows what the dude is dreaming up in there? It may be the stuff of nightmares. Like imagine if he dreamt up being in the- ugh, god. Fortnite server full of sweats or something like that. God, you may as well shoot me there. So the sweepstake part comes up at the end, where all you have to do is go to Nintendo's official Twitter account and basically tweet at them the secret phrase that's shown towards the end of the video, alongside a hashtag Mario Luigi to win a Nintendo 3DS XL and Mario and Luigi Dream Team. Now, whether it was the special 3DS based on Mario and Luigi Dream Team, or if it's a regular 3DS and a copy of the game are up to debate, but if I had to say, I would guess it's the former. Now, the commercials themselves came up in three different videos, coming out every week starting on August 1st, then another on August 8th, and then one final video on August 13th. Now for the first commercial, it seemed like there were a good amount of participants, expectedly so. When I looked up Defying Gravity with Luigi Saves the Day on Twitter, which was the secret phrase for the third video, there was a ton of results for that as well, alongside the other video where the secret code was Luigi's Mustache Saves the Day. And then there's this guy. Great that he did it, but um... We're a little late. Something that wasn't too late though was Tazaki Tezuka's swap note about Mario and Luigi Dream Team because it came out before the game was released on August 11th. But unfortunately, I couldn't pinpoint an exact date. Tezuka's note about the game would release on the swap note app and would say the following, quote, Hi, I'm Takashi Tezuka. I make Mario and Luigi games at Nintendo. It's Luigi time. Actually, it's his anniversary. Luigi's new RPG adventure is waiting for you on August 11th. Please check out his latest games on our The Year of Luigi special on Nintendo eShop. This acted as a very simple but effective technique at getting people hyped for the game to come out soon. With this note being out, Marchand then took the game by the horns and promoted it with Dream Team's own event for the Miiverse community to participate in. That's right, you thought we forgot about Mari-chan? We never forget about Mari-chan over here. She spun the block on August 7th with a post from the Year of Luigi community of her saying the following. Announcement. On September 8th, 2013, we'll be unveiling a new picture competition in the official Mario and Luigi Dream Team Bros community. See you all there! So this event is kind of like a combination of the Dark Moon event and the Super Luigi U event, where we're back to the drawing, but it's not a competition exactly, but an event that would have a bunch of pictures that people drew put up on the official website. Website. This event was appropriately named Luigi the Dreamer, where how it would work is that Mari-chan would post a screenshot of Luigi in some sort of sleeping position, and it was your job to draw what he was dreaming about. Now, there was no outright restriction to what you could draw, but I imagine it would have to make sense to his emotion that's shown in the pictures. The first of five pictures would be Luigi in a happy state on August 8th, another one of him in a scared state on August 15th, one in a worried state on August 22nd, a peaceful state on August 29th, and the final one in a battle state on September 13th. When each one was done, Mari Chan will post the pictures that people drew on its own page, similar to Dark Moon and Super Luigi events. Now, the final Luigi the Dreamer event was put up on Miiverse on September 13th, but Mari Chan had one final post about the event on October 3rd, where she would say that the website is updated for the final time. So, let's just say that's the official end to the event. Now the next thing on the list is talking about the Finding Luigi Legend of Parkour video coming out on August 26th, which honestly, if it wasn't on Nintendo's official channel, probably wouldn't have talked about it because it's, it's very... 
weird, buddy. You're weird. The basic premise is that these two dudes are creating a documentary about Luigi, who apparently does parkour in his off time. Now canon to the Mario Bros. lore. They go out to find Luigi so they can get an interview. First by going out and looking for Nabbit, because apparently wherever Nabbit goes, Luigi goes. Right, Nabbit? Okay. Afterwards, they chase after Nabbit for a bit. Then, when they lose him, they get distracted by corn dogs and completely miss Luigi backflipping out into the beach. During the documentary itself, we see a bunch of different creators that participated, which was pretty cool. There's people like Josh Jepson, Andre Blacknerd, The Completionist, and uh, uh, anyway, this is something that I feel had to have completely come out of left field, even for back then. I mean, you think Luigi would have grown up on the streets with how they treated him? Bro should have been on Eight Mile instead of this. I also found it cool how they referenced a few of his iconic moves in the interviews, like the Luigi missile and the Luigi cycle. Why am I analyzing this video, bro? <clears throat> All right, well, off that topic, we now enter the last quarter of the year Luigi for 2015. Now, September, October, and November were pretty much carried by merch we talked about previously and Mari-chan events like Luigi the Dreamer, but on December 18th, Mari-chan had this to say. Hi, it's Mari-chan here. Hope you're feeling as festive as I am. The Art Academy Sketchpad community is holding a special Luigi-themed event starting on Christmas Day, 25th of December. It's called the Luigi Exhibition. This event is for users of Art Academy Sketchpad to show off their masterpieces. Even if you don't work this software, be sure to come by and check out their work. So the Luigi Exhibition, or Luigi Sketchpad, whichever name is fine, was an event that was to be held on December 25th, 2013, where people would draw pictures relating to the year Luigi. Now this was different from the other drawing competitions for one reason. People had so much more freedom. What do you mean by that? Instead of using a limited app like Miiverse that, while possessing basic tools for drawing, isn't exactly the best option for drawing something. Especially when you have a canvas as big as the Wii U gamepad, the best thing to do is to use a different app design for drawing, thus leading to the Art Academy app itself. Now, Art Academy has kind of a complicated history, where it started off as just a DSiWare game, and throughout the years on different consoles it was on, turned into a decently fleshed out Wii U title in August 9, 2013. This was an app literally designed for drawing, thus the perfect community Community to send an actual drawing challenge for the year Luigi 2. Which is why on December 24th, Mari-chan opened the competition officially. She mentioned a few rules to the challenge, with the main ones being that it had to obviously have Luigi in the picture, you could only submit one per person, and that it was being judged on its originality and creativity. Mari-chan would announce the selected winners on February 3rd, with a post saying, We'll be posting our favorites on the Luigi exhibition website. Be sure to go and have a look. Thanks again for taking part in showing us all your Luigi art. The winners that were chosen were put up on the official site, immortalized for all gamers to see and admire. On the real though, I can't lie to you guys, the art presented here is so good, and honestly, I wish I could go through them all, but that would take way too long. Either way though, congratulations to anyone that won the competition. All the art looks amazing in their own way, and Mari Chan and everyone else that helped pick the winners did a good job at picking a diverse lineup of art styles and concepts for each one. And with that, we then come to an end in 2013, with 2014 on the horizon. But Mari Chan still had one more thing up her sleeve for the year of Luigi before her job was done, and that was the Dr. Luigi score attack. Introducing the most competitive Mari-chan Miiverse event yet, this was announced by her on January 16th, telling everyone to quote, look out for the score attack challenge, an event for players of all levels starting here on January 24th. Now score attack just sounds like an aggressive event for the sweats out there. And from what it seemed, it was definitely tailored towards them. Now to summarize what this was, your task was to see who got the highest score on certain settings that Mari-chan announced in her Miiverse post. Now to give the people starting out, AKA the absolute betas of the world a chance, there was two competitions, those who were in the beginner to intermediate levels, and another for those absolute specimens out there, <laughs> aka the advanced players. The beginner to intermediate event was first, quote, The Dr. Luigi score attack challenge, beginner to intermediate levels, begins now. Compete with each other just to see how high you can score with the following settings, as shown in the screenshot. Game mode, Operation L, Classic, Level 10, Speed Medium, Time Limit 2 minutes 30 seconds. In order to make this a fun event for all players, this first challenge is exclusive to beginners and intermediate players. Advanced players, please keep an eye out for the advanced players exclusive challenge, which will be announced in a later post. This post was on the 23rd of January, and the advanced players will get their calling card a day later. Their settings were slightly different with it being Operation L Classic, Level 10, Speed High, and Time Limit Set at 3 minutes. This was pretty much replicated in Round 2, which was announced by her on February 6th, where beginner and intermediate players would have the game mode on Germ Buster, the level set to 10 
10, normal difficulty, and the time limited 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Advanced players got their settings later on in that day, with the only changes being the difficulty being set to hard mode and the time limit being at 3 minutes just like the other one. February 6th would also be the day where Mari Chan announced the winners of the Operation L challenge, where the Germ Buster challenge was announced way later on, specifically on the 20th. Then afterwards, these accomplishments were displayed on the official website later on. Once again, there's a lot of winners because there was a total of 5 spaces for each challenge for both the beginners portion and the advanced portion. So the winners are just going to be displayed on the screen. Congratulations to all the gamers out there that won. And with that, puts an end to Mari Chan's final contribution to the year of Luigi. There was one final hurrah to end the year of Luigi strong though, and that was an eShop sale that took place literally in the final week from March 13th to March 18th. Looking at what was off, you had Dark Moon and Dr. Luigi on sale, alongside Super Mario Bros. 2, which was 50% off on both the Wii U and the 3DS. Mm. Then in the UK, aka the country of the bros, there was a sale for the eShop very similar to the one in the US, with new Super Luigi U and Dream Team being off instead, and the original Super Mario Bros. on the virtual console being 50% off, lasting from the 3rd of March to the 13th. And yeah, that's all she wrote. Thanks to everyone's kind support, we were able to release many Luigi games over the course of the year. I hope everyone continues to cheer for the Green Brother. After March 18th, Miiverse users will no longer be able to create posts or leave comments in the Year of Luigi community or its developers. A few more developers' rooms post by Miyamoto later, and the Year of Luigi was officially over, declared by Miyamoto in his final post talking about the year overall. And man, what a year it was. There was so much to this event that it was insane. I mean, honestly, even looking back on it, I'm shocked that this was the same Nintendo that put out Skyward Sword on the Switch as the main celebration for Zelda's anniversary. Games, merchandise, plenty of events, even being able to talk directly to the developers that worked so hard to give us the game celebrating Luigi. It truly is something to look back on and be happy about. And man, I'm sure with how much love was put into the year, I bet the financial return by Nintendo was one that was beneficial and completely worth it. <coughs> you couldn't even let me finish my bit and let me live in bliss? Michelle. So yeah, the year of Luigi turned out to be a financial failure, with Nintendo losing a whopping $456 million, almost equivalent to my college debt. So why? Why did this bomb so hard in Nintendo's face? Well, to be fair, making an entire year of games dedicated to one character is a bit risky, because if there are people who didn't care or like Luigi at all, they'll probably be missing out on a large portion of 2013 for Nintendo. That's no good. Also, the main games celebrating the year of Luigi weren't... Uh... Well, I mean, two of them were basic clones of games already released, and one of them was announced back in 2011. It's not like Dark Moon was this huge surprise for people, and there's even talk that maybe the game wasn't even meant to be for the year of Luigi, which would make a lot of sense. And then there's the <laughs> elephant in the room. The very square elephant in the room. I'm talking about the Wii U. Yeah, the Wii U just, just wasn't cutting it, y'all, and is easily one of Nintendo's biggest failures when it comes to consoles. It wasn't advertised or marketed well. It could easily be mistaken as a simple update to the Wii. It was clunky. There was barely any third-party support. And what was supposed to be one of its biggest years being its very first, and the main game that's being advertised constantly throughout 2013 was New Super Mario Bros. U, Luigi Edition. And while I do appreciate the year of Luigi a lot, don't get me wrong, especially looking back in retro, Respect. And I do miss when Nintendo would do huge events for games and characters. I can clearly see how this would have had a failure to Nintendo's wallet. Yeah, this in 2014 turned out to be some of Nintendo's worst years financially. Now, do we blame the year Luigi for this or the Wii U being a mess of a console? Honestly, it's up to you to decide for yourself. It's completely subjective. For me personally, I would put the blame on both, but primarily on the Wii U itself. Anyways, with this, you would expect Nintendo to sweep this whole thing under the rug like nothing ever happened, just like they always do. But no, actually, there were quite a few references to the year afterwards, even in games that came out later in 2014, so let's go through those real quick. For starters, on April 30th, in a Mario Kart 8 Direct, a reference was thrown from the commentator in a cheeky comment he made. I guess the year of Luigi really is over. Then in June 2014, there was a Luigi Nendoroid out for the public to see. This was made by the company Good Smile and specifically sculpted by Wataru Orita. The figurine seems to be an amazing quality, considering it's not just him, but there is also stands, a dash cloud, a bullet bill, and a Goomba accessory. Its cost? 4,584 yen, which is like around $34 in USD. 
Not bad for a figure this quiet. Skipping to October and November of 2014, we saw the release of Super Smash Bros for 3DS and Wii U. With that came trophy descriptions for each character that was a part of the roster. And similar to the website referencing it in 2013, Sakurai managed to squeeze a Year of Luigi shout out in there, saying that the attention apparently made him more shy and awkward. Stop the cap! Flash forward to January of 2015 was the release of Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. And guess what? In one of the cutscenes for the game, Starlo mentions how Luigi had a whole year dedicated dedicated to him. And finally, we have probably the biggest nod to the year of Luigi. The year of Luigi. On a diet plan. The month of Luigi. 2019, way less expensive. Let's get straight to the point. The month of Luigi took place in October of 2019, celebrating the release of Luigi's Mansion 3 that was to come out on Halloween later that year. To hype it up and celebrate, Nintendo announced the month of Luigi, in which the Super Mario UK official Twitter account did daily tweets about the Green Lab from October 1st till midway through November, believe it or not. Why? I don't know, dopamine? Alongside that, there were some smaller announcements and competitions that took place as well, all on Twitter. But let's start with the daily tweets since that kind of leads into all that anyway. So, listen, buddy, I've been here for uh, longer than I should have. So instead of recapping every single one because that's not fun for me or you, I'm gonna go through a few highlights that I thought were interesting. Day two was the first day that caught my eye, as it actually mentioned the year Luigi in the tweet. Also, it talked about New Super Luigi U, and we haven't talked about that game enough, so you know, just thought I'd mention it here. Now, I know we just started, but fun fact. Did you know that there was actually a contest involving Super Mario Maker 2 in this month as well? Yeah, I bet you didn't, you little moron, you. Enter in hashtag NPUK Building the Kingdom, a competition announced on the 7th of October where you could submit your own levels to build the kingdom. It seems each world has a theme to it, and this one, being World 2, had the theme of Luigi's New Mansion, which makes sense since we are currently in a month celebrating him and his scary game coming out on the 31st. Quote, with Luigi currently exploring the ghastly halls of Last Resort, Big Boo wants you to build a big mansion full of great horrors in Super Mario Maker 2. Wait, isn't that just slave labor? Now, this has just been announced, so we'll come back to this one to see who won. In the meantime, you know what we can do? Look at all these submissions. <sighs> it's... Beautiful. Anyway, let's go to day nine. Day nine also talked about Luigi and Smash Ultimate and even referenced a taunt where he does the scuff to the ground to slam people down when they're grabbing a ledge. Oh, hey, look at that. It's the 14th now. And it looks like Nintendo Play UK officially announced that it's the last day to submit a low for the contest. The next day that caught my interest was day 17, the day where Super Mario UK officially made a tweet dedicated to the year of Luigi. They even have Luigi and the official logo for it as well. Now, as I said before, the daily tweets weren't the only piece of content for the month of Luigi, as going back all the way to October 18th, 2019, was the official reveal to Luigi being in Mario Kart Tour, a newly released app at the time which was basically Mario Kart but mobile. New characters were dropped constantly, and of course Luigi had to join in on the fun. Convenient that the month of Luigi would be when he was announced for the game, though, if you ask me. The next day, however, Mario Kart Tour wasn't done yet, as they announced not only Luigi, but his Luigi's Mansion stage was also coming to Mario Kart Tour on the 19th of October. King Boo was also announced for the game, where he is ready to make his royal entrance in the upcoming Halloween tour. So yeah, quite a lot of Mario Kart Tour content that was coming to the month of Luigi. Also on the 22nd, Nintendo Play UK announced a short list for World 2 of the Kingdom Building Competition, then said that, quote, King Boo only wants the scariest levels for Luigi. Play each level and vote for your favorite. Okay, now bros is asking for too much. Like, come on now. You had up until the 29th to vote, so we'll check in to see who officially won the contest later on. Anyways, back to the daily tweets. The next one is day 23, where I guess it was an off day because they didn't even write anything this day, but just put a link to the Simon Belmont Smash Bros trailer, which in their defense has Luigi in it multiple times. Also in the trailer, Luigi does his plunger attack to the enemy, which is a reference to Luigi's Mansion 3 where the attack was introduced, but was unofficially announced in this trailer. Now going back to Mario Kart Tour, specifically on October 25th, we saw the release of another Luigi. Going from one mobile game to another, Day 25 was also when Super Mario UK mentioned that Luigi's playable in Super Mario Run and that he can jump higher than everybody else. Day 26? Bruh. Also, Super Mario UK made a reference to the Luigi stare, saying that, quote, Mario Kart Deluxe wouldn't be the same without Luigi. 
A Ouija stare reference in 2019. Day 27 actually caught my eye for a reason different from normal. Now, this day talked about new Super Mario Bros. Wii and mentioned how, quote, Luigi was a popular choice. Then they said, quote, probably because he jumps the highest and who doesn't want to leap higher than anyone else? Now, for any non-gamer out there, that's actually false. There are games where Luigi has the highest jump as a special trait like Super Mario Bros. 2, Super Mario 3D World, and etc, etc. But Super Mario Bros. Wii was not an example. So they made a correction saying quote he jumped as high as everyone else in new super mario bros wii turns out he was just popular because he's luigi and luigi's great day 29 rolled through and we seem to have an update from nintendo play uk reminding folks that today is the last day to vote on the spookiest stage speaking of spooky oh wow look at that now we're now we're at the 31st <laughs> it's like we're time traveling and you know what that means day 31 was finally the release of luigi's mansion 3 the game that this whole thing was for in the first place then also on top of that we had an end to the competition with Nintendo Play UK announcing the winners of the contest, those being Luke Young from Nintendo South Wales, Dan Tide from Nintendo North Wales, and aka Cole from Nintendo Norwich. For winning, they received a copy of Luigi's Mansion 3, in which a lad by the name of Leon sent out codes to the winners later on. So damn, this is quite an eventful day. What a good finale to the month of the Oh yeah, I forgot they kept going. All right, so I guess the month of Luigi became the month and a half of Luigi because they kept going through a significant amount of November as well. After day 31, day 33 rolled around with Super Mario UK talking about Super Mario Odyssey and the fact that Mario can confuse Luigi if you put on his green costume. Day 35 was interesting since they actually referenced E3 of 2019 saying that Luigi was there during the Nintendo Treehouse segments. I don't know why the reference to E3 was there, but I just found that as an interesting fun fact in all honesty. Day 39 saw the talk about rabid luigi and super mario rabbits i still can't believe this is a thing day 44 actually referenced luigi and mario kart tour talking about how earlier on in the month of luigi he was put into mario kart tour very strange how they reference an event that happened in the month of luigi during the month of luigi <laughs> Days 47 and 49 I thought were interesting too because they talked about the same thing, which is Gooigi, a character introduced in Luigi's Mansion 3 and I'm sure many to come. It seems like similar to Polterpup from Dark Moon, Gooigi's gonna be a staple in the series, coming in many games to come for sure. Now on day 50, Super Mario UK announced that it's the end of the road and that the month of Luigi has come to an end. This announcement came with one final contest, a competition for the brand new diorama for Luigi's Mansion 3, where he and Polterpup are chilling on a Stand. Now, I think I like this one a tiny bit less than the Dark Moon diorama, but this is still very cool and expected, don't get me wrong. So this was essentially a collaboration between Super Mario UK and First Four Figures, the company that made the diorama in the first place. All you had to do to enter the giveaway was to enter your favorite Luigi memory. Then afterwards, one person will be chosen to win the figure, though you had to submit your entry before the 26th of November. Shout out whoever won the figure, you know who you are. And then after referencing Luigi one more time in a reply to Nintendo's tweet on the 29th of November was when they finally said goodbye. Quote, Mario may have been missing for longer than he planned, but he's back. Thanks for the memorable month, Luigi. Have a great November, everyone. Thus, the month of Luigi finally came to a close. And yeah, gamers, that marks the end of all the references to the year Luigi after it was over. And thus ends our talk on the year Luigi. Honestly, the best way to describe the year Luigi is, um... Deformed cake. When someone looks at it, especially from the outside looking in, it definitely looks bad. But when you get into it and try a slice for yourself, you can really taste the amount of love and effort that was put into it. I think I can safely say that the year Luigi was a hefty one, with constant events taking place all throughout 2013 and 2014, with references being thrown at it constantly, even in recent memories. While the year ended up in a complete and utter failure, Nintendo embraces it and realizes that the year Luigi is something that should be remembered not forgotten. And as for me, well, I think I've gained a newfound appreciation to the year. After all, Nintendo tried so many things that they wouldn't dare try nowadays with their anniversaries. Don't know what's up with that, but it is what it is. Wait a minute. What if the year of Luigi is why Nintendo never does anything cool with their anniversaries and plays it weirdly safe all the time, spending as little money as possible? I mean, Zelda was just a re-release of a game that came out a decade ago, Mario All-Stars didn't have much of anything except the games, and they don't even do anything for their other franchises. Is it this anniversary's fault that we have to constantly be disappointed even though Nintendo was shown in the past that if they really wanted to, they could go all out and celebrate these franchises that clearly deserve it? No, no, no. This video is too long anyway to speculate on that kind of... Oh, sorry, sorry. I was just talking to myself. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you got to this point in the video, and I'll see you guys next time. With all that being said, you can put your spatulas down now, but keep it sizzling, my Baconators.
Peace.